right now we're going to talk all about the work of the Swift Institute. And joining us to discuss this are Ron Bernstein. He is the Financial Infrastructure and Systems Risk Professor at Tilburg University. Also with us, Godfrey de Fitz, Director of European Affairs at ICAP. And last but not least, Manmohan Singh. He's a Senior Economist at the IMF. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us today. I want to start with you, first of all, if I may, Ron. Why, what, first of all, what is the work of the Swift Institute and why would you become involved? The Swift Institute is very important. It has three main tasks. The first one is to promote research by giving out grants. Mm -hmm. So everybody can apply for a grant in the academic world, in the industry, mm -hmm. to promote more research on uh, the financial market infrastructures. The second one is to uh, give out more data. So the Swift data will become available, anonymized, but available for researchers uh, across the world mm -hmm. to do better studies on this. Mm -hmm. And the third one is to uh, organize conferences uh, in order to promote mm -hmm. more knowledge on this. Sure, so to sort of explain to everybody what you've been working on and why you've done this research and the actual key highlights of the research that you've been doing, these conferences. Yeah, and it's, it's the, the main uh, idea is to get more people in who are not now necessarily involved in this research mm -hmm. to get more people on this. Okay, so you've become involved in this and you brought along a graphic for us. And I got to tell you, with all my preparation and reading, I actually spent about, I would say, hours of time reading up as to what this graphic actually really means. So let's show everybody the graphic, which they can see now. What are you trying to say here? <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is that we should look at the industry as a warehouse. Mm -hmm. So we use the metaphor of a warehouse where you can actually see the whole industry in one place. Mm -hmm. It has nice layers in it, retail payments, wholesale payments, and securities, mm -hmm. in order to be able to see where all the major infrastructures are. Mm -hmm. Because what Swift is about is about transaction banking, it's about financial uh, infrastructures, and I've put it all to trying to put this very complex world mm -hmm. together into one warehouse, where you can uh, see what the, the interdependencies are, where the systemic risk uh, flows, and where all of the uh, major infrastructures mm -hmm. are, uh, are related to each other. Okay. And to my uh, opinion, it is very important to have this type of, uh, of research because uh, it is much under-researched. Uh, that's also why in my capacity as a professor of financial infrastructure, I'm trying to promote this type of research. That's why I'm also alienated with the uh, Swift Institute as well. Uh, we need more research on this. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, well, I know you had a little uh, discussion this morning. Uh, it was the first so far for the Swift Institute, as I understand, here at Cybos. Uh, tell us what were some of the things, Godfrey, you were at that, and so were you, Mamhan. Tell us about some of the things that you discussed there. What for you were the highlights? Well, one of the highlights is the potential increasing use of collateral. Mm -hmm. Collateral is what keeps the whole system together because mm -hmm. everything has to be secure these days. And so the need for industry to, to make sure that, you know, whatever they do, whatever their business is, is about, mm -hmm. that they understand how collateral flows, how can it be safely mm -hmm. moved between themselves. And I think Swift has also a big role to play in that because it's about messaging, right? And mm -hmm. how can you get collateral from one side of the world to the other side? So that's one of the points we discussed mm -hmm. this morning. And we're coming up, I know you mentioned a lot about the OTC derivatives, and we're coming up to that deadline 2012, and everybody has to go through these CCPs. Is the system actually safer? Well, it's, it's interesting you, you actually put the deadline of 2012 because a lot of deadlines are being stalled, mm. partly because the thinking behind this in 2009, just to give you a background, the G20 meeting in Pittsburgh was very premature. And finally, I think through efforts of all, buy side, sell side, the infrastructure folks, mm -hmm. they've seen that this is not an easy task. Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated process. The instruments themselves are not like equity. There are m many terms which are being understood better. So I think whatever is coming out of this conference and sort of the research agenda is much needed because the politicians have gone forward with this, mm -hmm. but the pieces are, are really in, I would say they're really in flux. Mm -hmm. So I think if they need time for this to be understood better, I mean, t I mean, 2009, there was really no Eurozone crisis. As, as Godfrey said, you know, we really need to understand collateral business. Well, collateral is now in acute shortage mm -hmm. by, by say, some metrics. Mm -hmm. So I think the timing, if this is tall, I think it's, it's much needed because the process which we thought it was and what it really is about mm -hmm. and the collateral shortage, if you just marry all this together, I think this could take a longer, much longer time, but that's okay if, 
if they get it correct mm -hmm. because OTC is is a very different product, mm -hmm. a very complex product, something which uh, uh, people had not thought about it. But I'm glad that every part of it is coming up. Now they don't have similar conclusions, but they're yeah. cognizant that this is a very different animal mm -hmm. than we thought in 2009. Mm -hmm. Th that's that's also why I included the OTC trade derivatives in the uh, in the in graph the as well, mm -hmm. because I think it's very important that we need a better understanding on how OTC derivatives play among themselves, but also with the rest of the financial infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's much uh, we don't know enough about that. Yeah, one of the points that is becoming more and more increasingly visible is that although the G20 said everything should go to central clearing where possible. We should think a bit further now because you know innovation is brought wrong because we have regulation yes. and both go together. And one of the issues that we have been looking at as a firm is as well to how can we reduce the need of collateral in this world. And for instance, we have launched a new product now who actually rebalances what's been debalanced by different CCPs coming to this world. And by bringing the different CCPs and the brother world back together through an uh, electronic trading mm -hmm. uh, application, we basically reduce the total risk in the system again, mm -hmm. which means you will reduce the need for collateral in different pockets. And mm -hmm. so, so efficiencies can be gained not only on the risk pers perspective on the CCPs, but also from a practical side of point, you mm -hmm. know, to, to make sure that this collateral bubble doesn't bring us into the next big uh, crisis. Which yeah, is because quite th possible. there is this view, isn't there, that uh, when you identify these SIPs, you know, these significantly important players, the fact of the matter is because there's so many hoops for those people to jump through that they're actually going to scale back. So it can actually create more risk in the system because you've got more risk with less players, and that's going to topple things a bit. Yeah, that's. Uh, I was last week in another conference, and it's clearly that. You know, uh, the real economy is getting frightened of, you mm. know, using central counterparties. Pension funds in Holland was a mm. good example. So they said maybe we won't hedge anymore. Mm. But that's actually exposing the real economy to risks that were actually managed more or less. And I think that's a dangerous trend. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we should reverse mm. that. I, I think one of the problems with uh, is that CCPs are not well understood. Most people tend to think as a CCP as a kind of a specialized bank, mm -hmm. but it's completely different from a bank. It's a risk manager, it's not a risk taker. Mm -hmm. And it should in that sense be uh, uh, governed in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, you have to look at the CCP, uh, look at the first C, it says central. Mm -hmm. So there should only be one. Mm -hmm. If you have more CCPs for, uh, for, the, for the same market, for the same product, the whole idea of a CCP disappears because then you have more CCPs and more CCP is no CCP at all. Yes, yeah. I think, uh, I think I'll just conclude on his remarks that we had some too big to fails, right? The very important players. Then FSB, the Financial Stability Board, sort of stamps 29 too big to fails. Now what's happening is we are creating over here CCPs, not one central, but many. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we're having too many too big to fails. Mm -hmm. And what's happening with this is, once you start fragmenting liquidity in different pockets, mm -hmm. you start putting a constraint on liquidity. As it is, we are constrained. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're having QE for a reason. The feds are printing money for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. On the other side, if the regulations are going to go the other way mm -hmm. and tighten up liquidity because of, because of the Basel ratios and mm -hmm. OTC, it just doesn't add up. So there's a lot of things going on from, or, or from the central banking side and the regulatory side which are not in tandem. So how do we balance it all then? What's the solution? because we don't want to go, I think what was happening, everyone was so scared and we went totally the other way. And now that, as you're saying, could create even more risk, more fallout. So what's the answer? I think one of the answers is that, you know, the use of collateral is very wide and, mm -hmm. and open to every actor. But of course, with the central banks becoming so active now in, in the way they uh, intervene in the market, a lot of collateral is going back out of the market. Mm -hmm. So the central mm -hmm. banks have to find a way to accommodate even that demand from the market in a way that they never did before. And mm -hmm. so when banks deposit unsecured cash in the deposit facility, 850 billion euro in the euro system, that's unsecured lending to the central bank. That has to be changed to secured lending in a way. Mm -hmm. so, it, so there's a lot of work to be done between the central banks and the industry to make sure that the collateral squeeze that has been announced doesn't go as bad as we some of us fear in fact mm -hmm. in the market. Okay, well, final thoughts before we leave? I think also from the legislator side, uh, US and EU should be uh, take, uh, sit together and to see whether their uh, respective frameworks are, are compatible. And that I think is also creating a lot of problems for the industry as well. Mm -hmm. 
I fully agree, and, and this morning's panel on the, with the CSDs there is a good example. They're part of this network. Don't disrupt what worked quite well, make them safer, but don't kill the baby that <laughs> needs to help us. Okay. I think at the end of the day, I think the regulatory folks have woken up. There are ter uh, there's terminology which they never thought, mm -hmm. like the reuse of collateral, et cetera. They're really waking up to the fact because central bank, if they start locking in good collateral, I mean, to just give you an example, 1.6 trillion is sitting in New York Fed. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good collateral, very good collateral, <coughs> which if it was in the market with a reuse factor of say two or three, mm -hmm. has a lot more impact. Mm -hmm. So I think these are issues which they're grappling with. Perhaps they want some more time to stall, but I think at the end of the day, and, and just one more point, between the different regulations, you could have regulatory arbitrage, and that's something they need to really think about, because the rules are not all on, on, on say one platform. Mm -hmm. Many rules are still being finalized, and they need to be cognizant that they can't have gaps that you know the markets move to Asia or some other place yeah. because of softer jurisdiction, et cetera. Yes, okay, well we'll leave it there. Some very interesting points. Thanks so much to all of you for joining us.